Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I am talking about how to use Microsoft Access Tokens on Microsoft Protected APIs with the Microsoft Authentication Library and Angular. I already made a video how to build Microsoft Login and Logout in an Angular application with the Microsoft Authentication Library. You might want to check out the link to that video. Here is a short summary of the steps. I have registered a single page application in the Azure Active Directory and used the client ID as a client ID for our Angular application. I have installed the Microsoft Authentication Library or short MSAL and configured the MSAL service in the Angular app. With the login method of the MSAL service, we can let the user authenticate at the Microsoft Identity Platform and access basic user info such as account name. Here is a short demonstration on how the login with a pop-up looks like. Now it is time to use the access token of the user to call Microsoft Protected APIs. The MSAL library provides a HTTP interceptor to insert the access token for specific APIs and to ask the user for consent to access certain permissions. For that, let us take a look at the MSAL GitHub for an Angular example. So down here you see that an HTTP interceptor is being configured. There is a map of URLs to an array of scopes. The array of scopes specifies the, which permissions are required to access the API. This URL is the URL to the Microsoft Graph API. This API lets you access the user's Office 365 data, such as Outlook emails or calendar entries. We can use this API to learn the interceptor. So with this map, you specify for which API calls the interceptor requests a token and inserts the token into the authorization header. Also you see there is an interaction type. This specifies how the user is being asked for his consent, either with a redirect or with a pop-up window. Asking for the user's consent means asking the user for his permission to use the scope on the API. So let's copy paste this interceptor factor method and use it in our own Angular application. I would also change the interaction type to pop up. Also, I must add two entries to the providers area of the Angular application, as you can see here. I have specified that I want to add an HTTP interceptor by using the MSAL interceptor class. Here and here. And also I have specified the provider for the MSAL interceptor configuration, which is the copy-pasted function of the GitHub example. Now we have the minimum setup to start using the Microsoft Access tokens of the logged in user. The MSAL interceptor will create and add access tokens for all calls of this URL. And also the interceptor will ask for the user consent with a pop-up window. It is now time to call this API with an HTTP client. For that let me import the HTTP client module. This one. So let's go to the component where we want to use the HTTP client. Let's go here and here in the constructor let's inject the HTTP client. And it's of type HTTP client. I want to store the API response in the string variable and display it in the web page. Let me create a method to call the API. Let's go here and create a method called profile and for that I use the HTTP client and I use a get method and here I provide the URL. Let me copy, 
Let me copy paste that. I'm calling the Microsoft Graph API and then I subscribe. And then I want to have the response. And right here, I assign the response to my variable API response. It's equals, and it will be a JSON response. So let's say JSON stringify response. And that's it. As you can see, I am not inserting any tokens. The MSAL HTTP interceptor will do that work for me. So let me add a button to call the API and, and a label to display the result of the API. Let's go here into the HTML template. And let me just create a table. And I want to render it only if I'm logged in. And let me create a raw. And here I am creating a button. Get profile and with the click event, I call the call profile function. And also I add a raw to display the result. API response is API response variable. So let us try calling the graph API with the logged in user. I have also opened the developer tool to see what is going on. So here I have the button to get the profile and I click on it. And now you see the user consent window. Here the user is asked to give his permission for this application to access his profile data. These permissions correspond to the specified scopes of the API URL we have configured before. So let me just click on yes and see the result. So this is the API result as you can see. It is interesting what the interceptor has done for us. Here you can see that a token has been requested at the Microsoft Identity Platform. Let's take a look at the response. And you see there is the access token, the ID token and the refresh token. And only after that the Graph API has been called to get the user profile. And if you take a look at the request header, you see that an authorization header has been placed. It contains the bearer access token. It's this one here. So the MSAL HTTP interceptor did all the work for us. So let us try to call another API. I am browsing the Graph API documentation and here we can see all the available calls for this API. We did use this get call to get the user profile. We can also get the email messages of the user with this API call. So let us copy paste this URL. And for that I am creating another method. I create a method to call the messages. And I paste the URL here. And I want to add a button to call this API. So let's go here. And another table raw. Get mails. Call messages method. And back at my web page, let's try to call this new API URL. And as you can see, the API call did fail. Let's take a look at that. It says forbidden. The interceptor did insert an access token, but the access is still forbidden. And the reason for that is because I need another permission for this API. So here in the API documentation for the list messages your API, you see that I need the I need one of these permissions, the mail read permission. So that means my application need to request this permission. And so let's go back to the interceptor configuration. We see this scope array and for that permission we need to add another scope. So I am adding mail read. 
So this scope array now means my application wants to read the user profile and it wants to read the mails of the user. And let's try that out. And now I'm back at the web page and let's call the get mails API. And as you can see, I have I get another user consent window and it's telling me the application wants to read my mails. And so I, the logged in user, am asked for the permission and I say yes. And as you can see, now I get the response from the API. And I can click on get profile and on get mails. Now you know the basic idea of scopes. Each API may require different permissions and you must provide them in the scope array to ask the user for his consent. We can also specify custom scopes for our custom APIs and use the access tokens of the user. For testing, I have created a simple Hello World Java service. It has the Hello URL and the response with the JSON where it says Hello World. I also print out the authorization header for debugging purpose. The custom API is responsible for validating the access token. So in order to create a custom scope, we are back in the Azure Active Directory in the overview of our registered application. And down here we have the button Expose an API. And here you can add a scope. So an application ID is generated for you. You can take it or change it. I just keep it. And here I can specify the details for the scope. I can give it a name. For example, say hello. And here I must provide the constant display name, the constant for the admin. I can say hello. Hello to say hello. And also the constant text for the user. That is when the user is asked for his permission. This text will be displayed to him. Say hello. And hello to say hello. And I click on add scope. And here I have the scope name. I can just click here to copy it and we can use it in our Angular application. And here at the MSL interceptor configuration, we must add the URL to our hello API and add the scope to the scope array. And let me just do it like that. I, the array contains the hello scope, this one, and the URL is localhost8080 hello. So with that, the interceptor should ask the user for the consent and create a token for this hello API. And of course, let me create a button to call this API. At first in the component, I create a new method. Say hello and change the URL, localhost, hello, and also in the HTML template, create another button, say hello, say hello. And that's it, let's try it out. So let's try to call this hello API. At first, let me log in. this user, the password, and now I have this button. Let me open the developer tool. And now I'm calling the say hello API. And as you can see, I get another constant window. And now it says, do you allow to say hello? This is the text which I've typed in on creating this uh, custom scope. And of course I say yes. 
and this is the API response. And we can take a look at the API call here. And as you see, the interceptor did create a token and insert it in the authorization header and taking a look at the hello service logs. So the authorization header did indeed arrive in this hello service. And also let's try the other APIs, the profile, and you see the interceptor is creating another token for the for the graph API. And it's working quite good. So now you have a basic idea on how to use the MSCL interceptor to ask the user for consent and to apply access tokens on API calls. I hope you find this video useful. Goodbye and have a nice day.